You know, one point number four that I think you are very passionate about, um, you say, don't get hung up on specialized knowledge. Right. Now, my grandfather, when he was alive, he used to say, you know, you need to find your passion and become an expert in it. Yeah. Now, this is a bit contradictory to what you're saying, but yeah, how do, how do you respond to, you know, this advice from my grandfather. Your grandfather had good advice. And the, 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 the fact that people are uh, students here at, at VHU or uh, other institutions, they you know, feel like they really they want, to fo they want to learn as much as they can about some really specialized era, area of marketing. See, you know, they want to know everything they can about B2C digital analytics, right? And that's all good. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting uh, 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 a concentration or a major or a very narrow specialization within it. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is that because time is finite, if you spend all of your time learning that particular area, you may not, you may miss the bigger picture of the kinds of general skills that are really necessary when you move up in the organization. Critical thinking and people management and leadership and these other kinds of skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's very interesting that um, at the undergraduate level, uh, in England, where I do a lot of teaching and where I spend a lot of time, at the undergraduate level, there are very few universities that offer a business major. Um, when I look at, just as an example to, to take it forward into the firm, when I look at the, the backgrounds of um, the young people that work for a friend of mine's um, recruitment company, she has a very successful financial recruitment company uh, in the city in London. When I look at, 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 their, at their descriptions, you know, they studied archaeology at Durham, or they studied classics at Cambridge, or they studied uh, humanities or whatever, um, and they got hired into, a, into business. Now, you know, that's really cool. And I'm not saying don't study business, not at all. I think business knowledge is good. But at the same time, while we're learning these specifics, while we're, we're, we're learning the arcania of tax law in Germany or whatever, we also have to pay attention to the larger things that we need to know about. And, and those skills are important because, for example, you may pivot in your career from digital analytics to something over here. Somehow you get hired, and it's a completely unreal, and you have to know how to, how to get into it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, in, a, in, a, in a very real sense, I'm sort of the, um, the walking example, we would say in America, the poster child for this whole specialized knowledge idea. Because when I was at American Airlines, I had 11 different positions all across the company. Wow. Because the company had a commitment exactly paying off what the point that I'm making about specialized knowledge. Mm -hmm. They said, we think it would be better for the company and therefore for the shareholders if we move people around while they're in their careers. Because as we move people around the company, some number of them are going to also be moving up and up and up. And by the time they get to the top, if we have moved them around, they will know more than just finance. That's true. Bob Crandall, who was the hugely successful CEO of American Airlines during their huge growth period in the 1980s and 90s, and who was my boss for the last two years that, that he was there. Early on in my career, within weeks of joining, I had a conversation with Bob about this very idea. Uh -huh. And he said, a, a lot of what I've just said, you know, this is going to be good for the company and bum, 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 bum. And it's, and, and it's going to be, he said, it's, it could be good for you too. And he said to me, to pay off this idea of specialized knowledge, he said, when you move around, when you move around, to, in order to be successful at that, in order to go, as I did, from the head of corporate communications to the head of food and beverage, yeah. wow, you need three things. You need to be reasonably bright, you need to be good at asking questions, and you need to be good with people. Mm -hmm. And if you have those three things, you can learn new things. You can learn to be an expert pretty quickly. On that first day in food and beverage, I said to the staff meeting, 40 people in the room, I said, I don't know anything about airline food service. I've been a consumer, so I like to eat, yeah. and I worked in a restaurant in high school for six weeks. 
But I said to them, I'm, and of course, I look around when I say that, and I see some eyebrows arched and some body language like this. I said, but I'm good at asking questions. I'm curious. And so I suspect that within six weeks' time, I'm going to be asking you a question that you may not be able to answer. And that's the point. Uh, interesting. No, that's, that's a very good point. Very good point. Um, there is some bits of knowledge that are zoomed out and should be, uh, you should be able to use them to adapt to every different role that you're put in. Let me, I mean, let me just use a specific, okay? Uh, and I'll come back to, um, uh, to my former boss, Bob Crandall. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the two years that I worked for him, my role was as head of corporate communications. And we, because he traveled a lot, he was kind of a, um, in a sense, he was kind of a media star. He was, he was the most articulate and perhaps even controversial um, CEO in the airline business in the United States. So he was in demand by television stations, CNN, et cetera, et cetera. So he traveled a lot. And I would typically, because I was you know, his, his, uh, his assistant, if you will, in those roles, I would travel with him. And very often people would ask, particularly if he was talking to a younger audience, and he spent a lot of time talking to young people, you know, and they'd ask about, you know, what are the skills that I need to advance my career? And absolutely, at the top of the list, the first thing that he said when he answered that question was, learn to write well and learn to speak well. Now those are very general skills. Those are not, that's not coding, yeah. and that's not um, you know, becoming proficient with digital analytics. Those are two skills that he thought, and that was 20 years ago, it's still true today. If you cannot write clearly and persuasively, if you cannot speak concisely and effectively, you're not gonna get ahead in the world. Yeah, no, it highlights the very the importance of communication and good communication skills.